race. This track always produces great racing, great finishes. It's vastly similar to the California Speedway, but unlike California Speedway, it's up in the north. It has a freeze and thaw effect. Put some heaves in the track that make it that much more interesting. Paul, there is a little bit of bumps on the track strictly because of that reason, as you mentioned, but the drivers love coming here. The 18 degree banking in the turns allows drivers to drive into the turn, drive very hard, two abreast, three abreast. Drivers have the confidence to put on a good show here today. Drafting will play a huge part, but make sure you watch the last turn, last lap. I'm sure there'll be a draft for the lead. For and the as you do that, don't forget that the IRL has had an average finish margin of victory of eight tenths of a second this year. Now, as we take a look at the starting grid, we're also going to have some of the drivers talk about how difficult this track is. And on the pole, it's Thomas Schechter. Buddy Rice is alongside a pair of rookies on the front row. The coming off a of two is most probably the most difficult corner because the, the banking drops off. So if you've got a little bit of understeer coming off a of two, it throws you to the wall very quickly. In the second row, it's Eddie Cheever Jr. and Sam Hornis Jr. back in the championship chase. And Mark Dismore and Elio Castroneves are in row three. Getting your car set up so you can run a high line, a medium line, and a low line, I mean, that's the hard part about this racetrack. Alex Barron and Sarah Fisher make up the fourth row. The toughest part is uh, just trying not to lose the draft. You know, things happen in the corner where somebody will take the front arrow off and you'll have to back off. LSAO Salazar and Tony Renna in row five. Renna led 35 laps in his debut at Nashville. Robbie Buell and Felipe Giafoni in row six. In the seventh row, it's Ayrton Dare and Loren Radon. The eighth row is Buddy Lazare and Scott Sharp, who won at Nazareth in April. April. In the ninth row, Dil DeFerrin and Raul Boisel. Back in row number 10, Billy Boat lines up with Ari Leyendijk, his 12th start at Michigan, but first since 94. In row 11, Richie Hearn and Jeff Ward, the winner at Texas. The 12th row, Greg Ray, part of A.J. Foyt's three-car team, and George Mack. And in the 13th row alone is Scott Harrington, the 99 IRL Rookie of the Year, his first run this season. Now, we, of course, are going to once again have plenty of onboard cameras and a chance to talk to some of the drivers, Scott Goodyear. Scott Sharp, Scott Goodyear in the booth. 400-mile race today, just 100 miles short of the Indianapolis 500. What's your mindset for today's event? A real similar approach, Scott. You know, you got to really be there at the end to do well. These races have historically had a little bit of attrition in them. I think it's uh, important to just improve the car all day long, stay in the lead lap, uh, maybe try to conserve some fuel in a draft, and really be there for a great run at the end. Well, put on a great show. And Jack Aroot up and down pit road, they're talking about infinity power. Infinity power is fast. It builds a lot of horsepower, but Paul, the questions are, is it, are they reliable? They swept the top three positions in qualifying, and Gary Gerald, more importantly, they consume a lot more methanol than their Chevrolet cousins. Jack, it doesn't seem like a lot of difference. Two tenths of a mile per gallon between Chevy and Infinity, but over 400 miles, that can be huge. It can save a team a full pit stop. So key decisions must be made. Do you run up front and burn more fuel and maybe have to make another stop, or do you ride in the draft and conserve fuel? Let's go to Vince. Earlier in the show, we talked about seven different winners already this season. As you go down the list, there are at least a half a dozen other drivers that are considered prime contenders today, including this team, the Red Bull Cheever team with Schechter and Cheever and Buddy Rice. But don't forget about former Indy 500 winner Buddy Lazier, last year's pole sitter, Billy Boat, Laurent Radon has been a factor this year, and Felipe Giafoni, fourth in points, has had a very good season. There are a variety of possibilities as we get ready to go green here today. So as the 25 cars roll, it's 200 laps, 400 miles on this circuit, and possibly, once again, a record finish. Now, don't forget, this is Michigan. This time of year, there are storms in the area. There are again today. They could influence the outcome. Stories that we're watching. Well, Red Bull Cheever Racing, they're the top three position. The rookies, there are 15 in the field who have never started here, either in IRL or CART. And of course, Along with the weather, the points fight that continues on. There's our Firestone winner's cam. It's on board with Alex Barron as a result of his win last week in Nashville. Mark Dismore will carry one for us. Sam Hornish Jr. back in that points fight. Keep an eye on this guy. And Tony Renna, his second week in the car, substituting for Alan Sir Jr. 
And of course, back in 16 starting position, Scott Sharp. Paul, what a great day this is going to be. Schechter is so primed right now. A little bit of problem in the team, as we heard earlier on in the show. And I've been in a situation before where positive team environment and negative team environment. Maybe that will drive him just to do it on a great show today. And as he mentioned, lead every lap and be there at Victory Circle. We'll have to wait and see. There's Sam Hornet Jr., the first Chevy in the field. His 20th consecutive top 10 start, a record for the league. And as you're watching the Red Bull cars when they come to the line, Look there on the pull. Schechter has some vertical yellow stripes by his intake. That'll help you identify him. Buddy Rice on the outside does not. And on Eddie Cheever's car by the intakes, again, you will see some red vertical stripes. Team Cheever has done that to try and help the identity for the fans. And we thank you. But now, they are on turn four. The Chevrolet Corvette pace car has already started its roll down. Acceleration begins. Field under the control of Thomas Schechter. And the green is out. They're gone at Michigan. Schechter gets a little surge on the field. Further back, Alex Barron looked down to the inside of Dismore, then gave it up. And Castro Navis tries to swing around, and Hornish goes with him. Now on the back straight. Coming up to full speed now. Castroneves. Mike White Wise. Mike, look at three wise. Wisely, Buddy Wright decided I'll stay low. See what's going to come up on me. That's a good strategy. Paul, they always talk about the start of the race and restarts always being the most dangerous time for a race driver. But already these guys are going 215 miles an hour, six inches away from each other. And these guys have been sitting around all day. It's amazing to see how fast they can get the concentration going at the start of a race. Buddy Rice goes side by side with Hornet, and in doing so, maintains his third position. Felipe Giafoni moved up six positions from 12th to 6th in just one lap. We'll help you follow that in the upper left-hand corner. Gold arrowheads tell you how they moved on the last lap. And for the fifth race, Schechter has led this season third time that he's led the opening lap. But it will not last for long. Buddy Rice now ready to work on Elio Castroneves. Probably no team orders here, Paul. We talked about some of that stuff at the beginning of the show, how Thomas wants to go out and just lead. And right now, he, Buddy Rice wants to make a move for the lead. He wants to prove that he deserves a ride on this team. How wise is that, though? First race, new guy. Well, a lot of it, ambition right now for Buddy Rice wants to stay there for the remainder of the year. They know they're looking at drivers for next year. He wants to get out there and pass Thomas and make his mark. Front four tightly bunched. Buddy Rice works the inside of Catherine Evans. Still, they say side by side. And as you suggested, speeds are coming up. 217 miles an hour that last time by. Here comes Buddy Rice again. Paul, Michigan is one of these rare tracks that speeds in the race will probably be higher than qualifying speeds. And the certain reason for that is a driver in qualifying is out on the racetrack all by himself. In the race here right now, you've got the drafting technique going on. The car in front is punching that hole in the air, and sure enough, the guy behind will go faster. Here they on the move with Castor and Evans coming up forward. We mentioned Giafoni moving. The Barons also coming up through that field. Dropping back. Fisher had a terrible start. Clear. Salazar had a horrible start. No idea if he's going to have a problem. So now Come he's going to try it again. Come he drops back. back. Inside. Inside. But Buddy Rice Inside. is going to try the inside of Hornish, try to get back up and battle with Castro Nevis again. You heard Pancho Carter, the spotter for Sam Hornish Jr., telling me he's coming back. He's looking on the inside. The ears for these guys right now are the spotters. They can really help and assist the driver, especially over this demanding 400-mile race. Well, and it's a real safety issue for the spotters, isn't it? Well, a safety issue, Paul. You think about you're sitting down in that cockpit, just looking over the windscreen. You want to be as low in the car as possible to get out of the airstream, and the driver sometimes just can't see out those rear view mirrors. So spotters are a wonderful thing for these drivers. The draft here. How prevalent is it? How do you use it? Well, we've seen it here already. 
the speeds from the guy behind us. We ride with Sam Hornish right now. Getting a draft. The car in front's punching that hole in the air for him. He gets the chance to come on top and take a run on the outside of Helio Castro Nevis. Didn't get it done, but he'll go back and try a different timing in the next turn. Coming out of turn two here, going hey, down the back stretch. Right now, let's take you up to the pole from uh, Giafone. Oh, they're fast. Giafone is now on the back end of Buddy Rice. There's the top three. Schechter, Castro Nevis, Cornish Jr. And then look at Giafone as he starts to work Buddy Rice. I'll tell you, watch Giafone today. I agree, Paul. We talk about new winners in the series. We had so many of them here this year. Giafone's been so close so many times. I wouldn't be surprised to see him in victory circle here today. Castro Nevis now begins to work up. Let's again talk about the draft. You can actually control the car in front of you, which is what I think Castro Nevis may have just been trying. Well, Castro Nevis, as long as he's not going to overheat the engine from running behind the car right there that you're looking at right now, the leader of Schechter, the best thing for him to do right now is for Castro Nevis to sit back there and maybe make up some fuel mileage. He gets a chance to have Schechter break that wind for him in front of him, and as long as he's patient, he doesn't feel like he has to lead, he'll get better fuel mileage, and maybe that will help him run a few more laps in the three. Well, Giafone and Buddy Rice continue to go at it. Giafone had the best of Rice a moment ago, and Rice came back. Now Giafone on the high line appears to be doing it again. We mentioned Eliseo Salazar. Jack Arut, what's the problem there? Well, Eliseo Salazar says to his team that he is running flat out. The telemetry, Richie Simon, told me the telemetry shows nothing wrong. So they've begun to try, Scott Goodyear, changing the fuel settings and also trying to change the gear selection. They've been back and forth between fifth and sixth. Still haven't found the right combination. Well, if he's flat out, he's flat out at 209 miles an hour. Running fast, but not the 218 that Thomas Schechter is running up at the front. Average speed for the first 20 miles, 215 miles an hour. And Paul, we heard from Jack about the situation with Alessio Salazar. Sometimes what happens is there's a throttle position sensor on the car. It's a TPS switch, and sometimes it goes bad. He could show that he's flat out, but the motor's not recognizing it, not giving him the horsepower. Looking at the top five, as Rice continues to go wheel to wheel with Felipe Giafone. He's getting a major lesson right now in running these cars. Well, we talked about how fun this track is, and as a driver, I can tell you from past, just a lot of fun. You go into the turn, you know somebody's going to be high, somebody's going to be low. If you get them, you know they're going to be back at you next lap. Schechter, Catherine Evans, Hornish, the top three at the Michigan Indy 400. Back at the Michigan Indy 400, Michigan International Speedway. Orders the same. Schechter, Catherine Evans, Hornish, the top three. Rice and Giafone, well, they continue to work with one another. And the rest of the field begins to reel in a little bit, led by Eddie Cheever. 
who is uh, still a couple hundred yards separated from the back of Giafoni's car, but he's slowly pulling them in. There's the front of the field. Schechter and Elio Castroneves. A moment ago, we heard a call, sounded like Tim Sendrick, talking to Elio Castroneves, saying, just let him run up there. We'll, we'll sit here for a while. Well, some Penske strategy, Paul. Let Schechter run up front. He's going to use a lot more fuel running up front, breaking the hole in the air, like we talked about before. And sure enough, Penske's probably getting a great fuel number right now. And the key issue here, you have to recall, is that if there's a yellow flag situation and you've had to pit under green before the yellow comes out, you have a chance of losing a lap when you do pit underneath green. If the fuel mileage is good and you just have to be out in the track when the yellow comes out, you pit underneath yellow, and sure enough, that's what the drivers are all looking for. Gary Gerald, you've been keeping a track of Team Penske. Yeah, that was Tim Sindrick, and they're very content to let Castro Neves and his teammate further back, DeFerrin, to ride in that draft. They're just trying to see how comfortable they are, how close they can get. Paul, it was interesting. I talked with Elio and DeFerrin about the difference, keeping in mind that this is the first time for them to run IRL cars at Michigan, but they have vast experience in the kart series here. And they said with a hit for device in the kart cars, the draft was much more significant. You felt the impact much further back. But here, it's a very stable ride in the IRL car, and you can pull up literally almost to the wing of the man in front of you, and the car will not be disturbed. So a big difference, but they're rookies at this racetrack in these machines. All right, clear. Team Kelly's car goes side by side in a battle for 10. Sharp finally pulls away from Renna. Nineteen into the record book. Probably a little over, a little under halfway to the first set of stops. Still over there, right there. Okay, you're clear. Hill coming up behind you now. There's the Firestone winner's cam. That's Alex Barron, last week's winner. Very, very happy guy. And DeFerrin's coming hard. Outside, outside, inside, 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 inside. Clear. One of those two, outside or inside. Still in front, Thomas Schechter. Castro Nevis still in second, but Schechter is now pulled away by nearly half a second and is running 217 miles an hour. Schechter, 218 miles an hour. He still leads and continues to pull away from second place Elio Castroneves. Now, Elio Castroneves' teammate, as we watch from Sam Hornish's view at Castroneves, his teammate, Jill DeFerrin, has been working still his way time. forward, bringing still a whole time. group still with there. him. Still there. Still there. Still there. Still there. Still there. Pancho Carter, who won the first 500 back mile. A little bit. Still there, still there. First 500 mile race for Cart here. Still there, you can wear behind if you want it. Firestone telemetry for you, Scott. You can see the speed, Paul, 218, going towards 220 miles an hour to the turns. 
that 97%, that's full throttle basically on these cars. And look at the Gs, up to three Gs. The driver's gonna be doing that every lap for 400 miles. But also some negative Gs. Still negative there, coming back a little bit. What that is, Paul, is that when you come off the turn, the car wants to go towards the infield, so then you steer the car straight, and you see We're that negative number one. coming up on the screen. It's, it's not like negative G in an aircraft. It just means you're being pulled the other way. There's basically a positive and a negative that we're seeing on the graph. Look at Felipe Giafoni. Once he separated from Buddy Rice, now he's on top of this group. Giafoni currently fourth. Still there, he's still there. At Michigan International Speedway, it's the Indy Racing League, the Michigan Indy 400. And this is the ongoing battle for second place behind the leader, Thomas Schechter. Front row, both rookies at this track, Schechter and Rice. Rice has faded back to fifth place, and the battle at the front has been remarkable. The pace blistering, 218 miles an hour last time by. Looks like Scott Harrington was down on the inside. They come past him, they just go screaming past. Giafoni now to third then. And the team has been very encouraging to him on the radio, encouraging him to be patient, but at the same time, pick your spot and go. The car is running nice and smooth, not much uh, report from Giafoni himself, but the team's very confident in the way the car is running and encouraging him on the radio. Now Buddy Rice has Hornet. Hornish runs the high line. You're clear behind. 28 laps complete. Okay, 10 4, Sam. Uh, can't do much right now, but we'll try and take care of his tire pressures at the next stop. Ah, so Sam's complaining about something. There's some conversation going on, Paul. You're absolutely right. You can see Sam Hornish's wheel move on the in car. You can tell he's not moving it very much. I would say the car probably is turning too easy for him right now. all the way to the left. You see what he's doing there with his hand right down in the corner underneath the steering wheel, moving that weight jacker that his engineer, Andy Brown, is telling him to do. Sam is not happy with the car off the throttle right there, losing positions, and right now he has to wait to the first stop to allow the pit crew to do some work for him. Tomorrow night, Tiger Woods and Jack Nicholas team up to take on Sergio Garcia and Lee Trevino in a one-of-a-kind primetime event. Lincoln Financial Group battle at Bighorn tomorrow night. Live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Schechter, Castro Nevis, Giafoni now. Hornish, despite the fact he turned a lap at over 219 miles an hour, now something's gone a little off on the car. Is it possibly the fact we're seeing sunshine down on the track for the first time this weekend? A possibility, Paul, but also you have to remember there's a lot more rubber going down the track as the race is progressing. He's probably run out of adjustments on everything that he has in the car. And some great running going on here right now. Let's go to Jack Aruk. Going about eight laps to leader, Thomas Schechter will be pitting, and it'll be the first real test of the day. Why? He has Greg Beck in a replacement crew. His regular crew is servicing Buddy Rice, so this is Greg Beck who piloted Billy Boat to fourth in the IRL standing. They're coming in in seven laps, guys. All, all in all, it's really a trying weekend for Thomas Schechter. His racing hero is the guy who has been most angry with him this week. Well, Paul, that might change, actually, after this last week. We might have a, a rewrite on that, but he certainly had a tough week, and I can tell you that, for, without a doubt, he's a fast guy, 21, 22 years old. When you're that young, I don't know if anything really bothers you. And, and his life this week might have been a topic for the Jerry Springer show, his favorite <laughs> television show. So Schechter now out three seconds ahead of the second place, now Buddy Rice. Remember, we told you we were going to follow Red Bull Racing. They started together on the front row. Now they're back to those same relative positions with the exception of Eddie Cheever. Eddie Cheever has slowly gone backwards and Cheever is sitting back in 10th place right now. Interesting to note, Paul, if you looked at the grid right now as we watch Eddie Cheever, that Eddie got qualified by both his young protégés. They out-qualified him on the grid. The same thing happened with the Dryer Rheinbolt team with Robbie Buell. Sarah Fisher out-qualified her. Same thing with Kelly Racing. Tony Renna out-qualified Scott Sharp. So the young guys are certainly coming into the sport. Achiever now back to 11. 
Chester Rice, Pastor Nevis. That's the front. And we begin to approach the first stop. Stops are going to be critical because, as mentioned, Infinity makes more power, has a nice torquey power range, but it also uses more fuel. And we heard that he was going to come in somewhere around 37, 38. Now, Paul, I got to tell you, that's on the lower end of the scale. Most of these drivers would like to get somewhere over 40. Well, and if they're if they're going to have a really good race, the Infinities need to go further than that. Looks to make it a good set of stops, they need to get all the way up to the 50 second line. Heard seven laps to pit for Renna, so sounds like he's going to go three or four more than Thomas Schechter. The point that we talked about before is that the key issue is that if the first stops are started and the yellow comes out, the problem is those guys might lose a lap. Look at this. Renna is up working the professor, Gilda Farron, on board with Renna now. Going to keep an eye on Thomas Schechter, the leader, because he is due in any time now. Remember, this is infinity power. Thomas with his teammate Buddy Rice behind him by two and a half seconds. I imagine coming down from 218 miles an hour and having to hit that pit speed limit. And Paul, not only that, but the pit speed limit starts back here at that cone, and he's got one of the first pit boxes right here at the beginning of the pit lane. And he hit his marks perfectly. He's reset his fuel, he's taking 35 gallons. They've made a wing with Justin Clark on a full turn. Fourteen one, we see up here, Jack. That might be a little longer. Now, don't forget, this crew's been brought in. They haven't been actually out on the racetrack doing this thing for about a year or so. They are not those laid out those to stop yet, will probably get a little quicker as the race goes on. Here comes Sam Hornish. Good lane, speed loader. Reminder to slow down. Zero fuel halfway down, Sammy. Use the pit speed limiter. And so the first round of stops. Now beginning for everybody. We get green flag to this point. While we're watching Sam Hornish's crew in action here for Barnes Panther Racing, major wing change by Kevin Blanks on front. Water bottle thrown away. Now the fuel comes out. He may have stalled the car. He has. Now they refire. Close to a 19 second stop with that glitch. Here's Buddy Rice. And Paul Buddy Rice missed his marks on the backside, but the crew went to work and they managed to get him straightened away enough so that they get the fuel hose connected. He's off the way completing his first ever IRL pit stop. And so far, Castro Nevis has remained out and in doing so takes over the lead of the race. Long stop for Schechter, but they were very, very careful. Here comes the Farron on the pit road. They say his teammates, okay, the leader, good stop here, guys. Okay. will be in Ten. next time. Nine, come in shallow. Four, three, two, one, shallow. Nice and easy here now. You heard the command from Penske, you can come in shallow. That meant that the pit behind him was vacated of Castro Nevis. Castro Nevis will be in on the next lap as they service Jill DeBaron and his teammate. Already down off the jacks. There goes DeBaron, and Castro Nevis is coming. Next one, this is right here. Okay, speed limiter off. Speed Watching limiter the off. service now. Watch the race. Watch the race. Keeping an eye, two pits behind Castro Nevis is Giafone. Castro Nevis is rolling. Here comes Giafone. Under green, all these stops, and so important because the net effect is about a 43 second loss overall. So as they cycle through, theoretically, all come back in the same order as you went in, but that theory only applies if every stop was at exactly the same rate. The leader now is Tony Renna with Scott Sharp right behind him. We'll be back after this word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Still out there. You're clear. Pit now. Pit 
now, do you want any changes? They're all around, they're all around, look for Robert, look for Robert. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice and easy. Hold the brake, hold the brake, reset fuel, reset fuel. Hold the brake, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Tony, second gear, 4,000 RPM, second gear, 4,000 RPM. Back at Michigan International Speedway, however, you can see that it is not at race pace because we have the first caution of the afternoon displayed on this two mile high banked oval. It is because of debris on the backstretch. You're looking at the leader, Thomas Schechter, and this caution really comes at a good time because pit stops have just occurred. This Wide World of Sports update brought to you by Mobile One. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Here now, Bob Jenkins. And we'll get back to racing here at Michigan in just a moment. This was not the only activity on this racetrack this weekend. Earlier today, the third race of the Infinity Pro Series took place. Ari Leyendijk Jr. on the pole. Some great racing involving Leyendijk Jr., A.J. Foyt, the fourth, Ed Carpenter, and Aaron Fike. The draft definitely played a factor in this event. But it rained, bringing out the checkered and the red flag at the same time. Shortening the event, A.J. Foyt the fourth wins his second out of three Infinity Pro Series events this year. Finishing in second position was the pole sitter, Ari Leyendijk Jr., followed by Ed Carpenter, Aaron Fike, and Ronnie John Cox. At the German Grand Prix today, Michael Schumacher wins in his home country with Juan Pablo Montoya finishing in second spot. The U.S. Formula One Grand Prix will be televised on ABC Championship Television Sunday, September 29th. That will be live at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And one other bit of news you may have heard about it this past week. Michael Andretti has bought Team Green. No word right now on which series that team will compete in in 2003. The caution is on here at Michigan for Debris. Back in a moment. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we got another lap or two. That's fine. Uh, 
Uh, Tom, I don't think there will be a wave around. Schechter's in the lead. There's nobody in front of him. Four, the rest of the cars are... We are currently P10. In just a little over a lap, we will go back to racing here at Michigan. There is last week's winner at Nashville, Alex Barron. Scott? Alex, Scott Goodyear in the booth here. Great race today. How's the car working for you so far? But, uh, we had a little bit of a rain last night, a pretty great track. We had to uh, make an adjustment on that stop. Uh, the balance of the car was quite a bit different than yesterday, but uh, I think it's coming to us. I think it's going to be a good race at the end. Good news. Good luck today. Thank you. Alex Barron right now is running in 10th position. We have 14 cars that are on the lead lap with the 50th lap just about to be completed. Down to Jackaroot. Bob, they discovered what the problem is with Eliseo Salazar's car. They're going to take the rear bonnet off very quickly. The air box has come loose, Paul, and they've got to reattach it. That's why the car's not running well. Despite all the problems, Salazar has only fallen two laps behind the race. On the back stretch now. There's the restart order, and remember if the name's over on the right-hand side, they are not on the leader lap, so it's Schechter separated from Catherine Evans by one guy lying. Like, what's going on with the Hornets here? Well, telemetry problem earlier on. I'm trying to listen to his a radio. No start, Sam, a no start. And Pancho Carter's got it right. They were gonna, gonna start it, but they waved it back off. Up. It's a no start, it is a no start. Just quickly, we got in there a little bit late, but I got to tell you, maybe he was not in gear because he had his hand down on the right-hand side, down here on the shifter. Gary, what are these situations? Yeah, go right back where you, back where you belong. Here, Pancho sending right him back up to that the spot. Right behind the 37 right car, that's Scott Harrington. A telemetry problem. They've lost telemetry here in the pits to Hornish relating to fuel consumption. I asked John Barnes if that would be a problem, and he said, no, no. He can relay, he being Hornish, can relay the information off his steering wheel or a dash to us here in the pits. That should not be a concern. Oh, man, the next thing is they'll have to go back to the old analog day. Got to go this time. After the first stops up ready. of the race, here's how they fared with Rice, and one might expect it. New guy overshot the pit by a foot or two, and uh, it ended up costing them, but they were very careful, and that was a, a bright way to handle it. Schechter. Catherine Evans, Giafoni are the front three when they come back. That's Ari Leyendijk sitting there behind Schechter. Green flag flies over Michigan and they're back racing again. 50 second lap. And Paul, what Ari Leyendijk wanted to do, he wanted to be able to get in front of Schechter to be on to get himself back into the lead lap, but he certainly didn't seem like he had the power to be able to do that on the restart, and he still ends up beating himself a lap down. At the same time, Felipe Giafone, who was sitting in third, got caught up with several cars and was unable to mount a charge on the front of the field. That's costly because that was his opportunity to get up with the leader. You can see he just crossed the line. He separated back there. Oh, one of the things Giafone has talked about is the wind. He says he really feels the wind, particularly on the back stretch. He's struggling a little bit with the handling of the car since that first pit stop. So keep an eye on Giafone and whether or not he stays up to the front. Same report from Castro Nevis. Extreme wind on the back stretch, guys. Well, yeah, that's true. But the good news is that wind's coming up from the south. Looks to be above 15 miles an hour. But as long as it is, that's also helping keep some of the rain live to the north of us away from the track. It's sunshine here. And Paul, what those drivers are talking about, the wind is actually going on front of their cars as they're going into turns one and two. As they go down the back stretch, the wind is behind them. It makes the car handle different at both ends of the racetrack. A good handling car 
standings in one and two and a bad handling car in three and four. They have to make a compromise to make some adjustments to make sure the car works well for them at both ends. Yes, all right. Make the move on Giafoni. ABC Sports is giving you the chance to win a ride in an Indy car and an all-access pass. The next year's Indianapolis 500. All you need to be is their later call our 800 number and we'll be revealing the number later in today's race, so stay tuned. 218, four, leader 217.7. Yeah, but Buddy Rice at 220. Last time around. Get inside, get inside, inside, clear. The Farron with Dare right up under his wing. Jacker still the leader. He's got almost two seconds over second place. Buddy Rice. Dare's worrying the Farron. Giafoni's trying to catch Castro Nevis for third. Dare looks for low. Giafoni looks high. Too wide across the line. Giafoni resolves it. So Giafoni finally around. And the caution comes out again at Michigan. Uh, they're saying that Ari Leyendyke may have lost something, and that's it. Looks like a piece of wing or something. Actually, Paul, it might be a headrest, huh? The uh, front cowl off the front of the car, because you can see the antenna sticking oh, yeah. up right there. So sure enough, that came off. Now, as you run along here, you'll see that piece fly up and go off right there. And you can see the car lost its front cowling. Uh, it's a light piece of carbon fiber with uh, just a little metal and the antenna on it. But still, you've got to stop the thing, slow the race down, and bring the caution out. Okay, well, what's the choice? Uh, no radio or uh, a cover? Well, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, well, the radio's working, so uh, we can just give it a shot. If you want, wait for the pit stop. You should be on about uh, half tanks. Yeah, I'm at 20. Well, then we can't run without it, so we need to bring you in, put it on, and give you some fuel. Right now? No, don't pit yet. Stay out. Why can't we run without it? Our air open. Our open. Our open. Our open. It's not open. Through the pits. Go through the pits. They made a decision we can run without it. He's on the track. He's on the track right here to start finish. All right. Back in Michigan International where the caution remains on because the front cowling on Ari Leyendijk's car blew off. This is Gilles DeFerrin who is making a pit stop and relinquishing the seventh position. Thomas Schechter is still the leader. Two-time defending champion Venus Williams looks to make it three in a row at the Acura Classic. She takes on a tough field including Monica Sellis, Jennifer Capriani, and Lindsay Davenport. Catch the final of the 2002 Acura Classic next Sunday, live at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, on ABC Sports Championship Television. Paul, there will go green and a half a lap. And Jack Haru just reported that Ari Leyendijk said without that piece on the car, it's a lot cooler in the cockpit, so if we can, let's leave it off of there. It's Team Achiever, Red Bull, at the front of the field as we come back to green. Schechter and Rice running 1-2. Giafoni third, Castro Nevis fourth. There was some conversation as to whether or not they could leave that calling piece off the car, and race control said, yeah, we could leave that off. 
Well, the question, Paul, on that is whether or not it disturbs the car aerodynamically because the wind comes up over the front of the car and goes towards the rear to the rear wing. They made the decision to stay out and to give it a shot. Decoroo. Well, Paul, I mean, Paul, I can answer Scott's question according to Ari Leyendijk as we watch this battle between Sam Ornish Jr. and Scott Sharp. He said it has not affected the handling at all. That's why they elected to wait until their pit stop is to come up in about 20 laps. You can see the progress there of Sam Hornish Jr. as he dropped back to seventh with that pass on Scott Sharp. It brought him back up into sixth place. Gary Gerald. Roger Penske apparently electing to split the strategy on his team. That's why they brought the Farron in. No problems that we understand from the crew. Meanwhile, you had that question about what happened to Sam Hornish on the back straightaway on the last restart. John Barnes told us it was simply a case a couple of cars ducked in in front of him. He had to get on the brakes and he backed fully out of the throttle. So that car should be fit to go as he works high on the car of Ari Leyendijk, the now air conditioned Leyendijk machine. Still inside, still inside, clear. Ari back in the Meyer car, first time since the Indy 500. First time here in a number of years. Ari's been picking and choosing his racing. Barney's currently sixth, leader is Schechter. Go up to second place, here is Giafoni as he works on Buddy Rice. You know, kind of when you're working on rice, the way they're configured, you're working on check. Jackaroo? Well, that's exactly it. Now, Owen Snyder is calling the shots now for Buddy Rice. He used to call him for Thomas Schechter. He just radioed to Buddy, said, go ahead and pass him if you can. Well, if Schechter came in here with a personal and professional challenge, he's answered it well. Smooth run in the lead. Giafoni, looking high for inside. second. Still there, still there, still there, still there, still there, clear, good job. Well, that line's working good for Giafoni. The high line certainly seemed to be the faster way around. Sometimes it keeps the car a little freer. But what I did notice on that last pass, Paul, is that Rice gets awfully low down to the line, as you saw right there right now. Now, there is a hinge point, an 18 degree banking on the bank itself, going down to the flat apron. And as a past driver, I can tell you, you don't want your wheels down near that line very often. There's also kind of halfway between one and two. The closer you get to the line, there's a pretty big bump there, isn't there? Yeah, it was a little bit rougher as we talked about. The open of the show, this track has been around for quite a few years. The winter's not so kind to it as the sister track is in Fontana. The drivers have to compensate for that, not only in car setup, but also in driving their lines. They know where every bump is around this racetrack, and sometimes you might be able to push a car up and maybe take advantage of that when you try to pass them. Casper Nevis, Hornish, Dare. This is the battle for third place. There's the lead. And then a further up track. Same sort of situation in the battle for third. Buddy Rice continues to use that low line. Low line might pay off right at the very end of the race. Now what's happening right now? He's, he comes Going off inside, low. inside, 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 still there. Trying to get a little speed as he exits off the turn low, but sometimes the high line is a little quicker. Now you get to the end of the last few laps of the race, you want to run that low line because you don't want anybody inside you on those last few laps because they might take the lead and themselves start to run the low line. You see this a lot getting closer to the end of the race. It'll be interesting to see if he's trying to make his car work on the low line, trying to set himself up for the end. Now, Thomas Schechter, who's had a tremendous season but has yet to turn it into big championship point, looking strong here today. The pressure is on him. We'll be back. After this word and a word from our ABC station, you're watching ABC Sports Championship Television.
400, the Indy Racing lead. Laps generally at above 218 miles an hour. Thomas Schechter, the pole sitter, is the leader. Though Felipe Giafoni for a moment poked his nose up in front and paid for it. Fell all the way back to third again. That's Buddy Rice in second. And all three in the front are drivers looking for their first career win. So that's kind of been the tone of the Indy Racing League this season. We're seeing it again here at Michigan. Watching Hornish, who sits high, running now side by side with Dare for fifth, Jack Aroot. Well, some of the issues with the new crew chief and crew members is when to pit. Thomas Schechter's crew, along with Craig Beck, they've been huddled with the engineer. They are going to pit in four laps. This is what Thomas Schechter does not like, however, because as he told us, he wants to lead every lap. Well, Thomas, sooner or later, you're going to put more fuel and tires on it, just the way it is. Scott, I'm wondering, we saw the strategy split by Jill DeFerrin, who came in out of sequence on the 58th lap, everybody else about the 40th, 41st. If you were one of the infinity cars, especially a three-car team, like Eddie Cheever's team is, wouldn't you have stopped one of them out of order two? Well, Paul, they got both those drivers up the front right now. Schechter and Rice are running strong. If anybody was to do it, you would have to think that maybe Cheever would come in because he doesn't seem to be running that strong. I think that's what Penske looked at. Castro Nevis is running strong, has the ability to run up front with the lead through. Gilles DeFerrin did not look like he had that, so maybe he's taking a chance here. They'll be off the sequence and their fuel will stop, but they might just catch the yellows right and find themselves in the right place at the end of the race. Watching Tony Renna work the high line there. Dari down low. Renna's teammate Scott Sharp ahead. Clear. Vince Welsh. Felipe Giafoni, as you noted, Paul, had slipped back after initially taking the lead, but the team radioed in and said, just time it nice and smooth. We have a long way to go. Don't worry about slipping back. Just stay with these guys because you are doing fine chasing the infinity. So for the team, not uncomfortable with Giafoni's third place position whatsoever. Average speed, speed now with two yellows and a green flag stop up at 186.9 miles an hour. Felipe Giafoni. Looking for his first win. This may become his favorite racetrack. Usually a case in point, I can tell you. When I first won here, it became my favorite racetrack, and the winner today will probably put that on his roster also. There's got to be something special about that first win. Always something special, especially when it comes to a great track like Michigan that has such a history with great races and has so many great victors here in the past. And to have an opportunity to win at a high-speed track and take your first victory here, always goes down the record books for drivers. Giafoni pokes his nose under the wing Outside. of Buddy Rice. Outside, clear, good job. Giafoni to second. Last time he did this and came out high like that though, he lost some energy and had to give way. You can nice see the job. leader. Remember that move on the last lap. <laughs> nice job. Absolutely. Schechter now with some traffic, but they've changed the strategy a little bit. They're trying to go a little further than they originally planned for Thomas Schechter. Well, Paul, they remember last time, once all the pit stops were completed, the yellow came out. So 
They want to try and gamble and push it as far as this infinity. Methanol gulping engine will take them. You see Schechter as he comes up on traffic. And Giafoni, just half a second back. That's the relationship, first to second, right there. There's Giafoni. Giafoni seems pretty comfortable running a slightly higher groove, too. Absolutely. Seems like he does that every lap, but I notice he also does it coming off of turns three and four. Now, Paul, he may have a situation where the car is not turning that well for him, and he's using up more racetrack. If that's the case, you'll see them make some wing changes during the next pit stop for Giafoni. Now here's the distance since the last pit stop. 42 laps is a pretty long way, especially for the power of the Infinity engine. Giafoni, now Chevrolet power, so he can go a little bit further, maybe as many as three laps further. But we expect Schechter will be in at the conclusion of this lap, and there's his team, he's ready to go. Also part of that points battle, Sam Hornish Jr. He's currently in fifth behind Catherine Nevis, and they expect him in three laps. I'd say probably Catherine Nevis about that time as well. So leader in. Paul, there is a steely-eyed determination on the face of Thomas Schechter. He rests in the car. He's resetted the fuel meter. This ragtag crew has gone to work. Problems on the right rear, but they do get it done in time before the 35 gallons of methanol are out. Seconds, a marked improvement over the first pit stop. See him come out and give the thumbs up as Thomas Schechter heads out. Now Giafoni stayed out. That's Mark Dismore coming out behind Schechter. Giafoni stayed out. You expect that he can. And in the meantime, Hornish continues to work on Catherine Nevis. This is now a battle for third. Outside, still out there, still out there. Got another one following him. Now, as Hornish is trying to get past those cars in front of him on his left-hand side of the screen right there was Schechter. Inside. Now you see Sam raising his hand. He's off the throttle. He's telling the guys behind him, I'm pitting this time. Don't run into the back of me. <laughs> Hornish down off the back. Yeah, he might might be a little gun shy after getting run over on that yellow hey, last week. Let's make sure everybody knows where he's going. One more. Let's put tail lights on the car. Leave until rocket lets you leave. Now you heard, do not leave until Rocket lets you leave. That's the right front man. Last pit stop, Sam tried to leave too soon, but the fuel was still connected to the car. That's why he was not installing the car. He reported the guys that the car got a little bit loose in traffic. He'd been making an adjustment on the sway bars. No aerodynamic changes thus far. Much better stop. This time right at about 13 seconds, 12 uh, Actually, a little slower than what that team is used to. You saw. Kevin Blanche, the right front tire guy, tried to put the wheel on, but the car had actually already started to come down off the jacks before it was finished. Probably two seconds longer than they could have done. Interval stretches out between first place and second place. Giafoni and Rice. Rice would be expected on the pit road, and he makes that turn down now with 84 complete. Castor Nevis stayed out as well, and they expect him to stay out another lap or so. Now let's see if Buddy Rice hits his marks. He locks it up about a foot before, but slides right in nicely. This is the crew that normally would be working for Thomas Schechter. They're fast and they are efficient, but they are getting ready in case Rice stalls the car. You can tell on the board. He is off and away in 13.0 seconds. Still watching for Felipe Giafoni. Getting into the Morris Nunn pit. one left. Keep, keep pushing. Good job. Right there is your leader. Second place is Elio Castroneves. You heard Morris Nunn talking to his driver, Felipe Giafoni, the 21 car, the Hollywood machine. Scott Sharp has moved up into third place, but he too will have to stop, as will his teammate, Tony Renna, who currently runs in fourth. Be careful as you come in, because Blair, they may be in. Keep, keep pushing. The voice is Peter Perrin, who's managing the team here. He's Next looking for... Go to mixture two. Go to mixture two. Looking for his first win in an IndyCar since 1991 with Next Ari Landai. 
Parrott also engineered a couple of Rick Mears' best victories. Nice and easy, nice and easy, watch it. Blair's in the pit. First and second. Okay, okay, you're gonna have a second. Put it on the mark. Watch for the lollipop, nice and easy. Nice and easy, still be right on the mark. Good job. Don't expect any changes with this car, Felipe Giafoni. It's just going to be fuel and tires. They did make a wing adjustment on the first stop, but nothing on this particular stop. He is down in three. Fueling complete for Castro Nevis, but he was a couple of beats behind Giafoni. On the clocks, identical stops virtually, only a tenth of a second difference. And we may have an X factor, Paul Page, because also pitting with all those Chevrolets, the infinity of Eddie Cheever Jr. He's gone seven laps farther than any of the other Infinity Power Plants. Yeah, that was pretty good. He went to the 88th lap. Now this man, Scott Sharp, the Delphi car is the leader. His teammate, Renna, right behind him. They are yet due to stop. Back at Michigan, and the leaders stop Sharp and Renna. They carried the Team Kelly cars up three laps further than everybody else. 93 laps are complete. But as they roll out, Jill DeFerrin, who is the only one right now running a totally split strategy, assumes the lead. And a pretty good lead it is over Schechter. That's the strategy we talked about before, Paul. You never know if it's going to play out. We'll have to wait to see. Right now, we've got Buell going slow on the racetrack. Yeah, sudden slowdown, and of course, you can't help but ask, this is one of the Infinity cars. It is, but there's a... Telemetry, anything? Caution comes out. Low. There you go. Fine. Car coming off the wall in four, and it's Jeff Ward. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, I thought. So the yellow comes out for Jeff Ward, and that's going to play right into Jill DeFerrin's hand. Has the opportunity to come into pit to get fuel and tires if he so wishes. But Jeff Ward, no luck last week hitting a car or hitting the wall actually in practice and bringing up the spare car and not having good luck this weekend either.
10 4. We have just completed 100 laps and so next time around they'll get the green flag and it will be a complete race. Here are the stories we talked about at the beginning of the event. The only one of the Red Bull Cheever racing entries outside of the top 10 is Cheever himself in 13th. Schechter is the leader of the race and there you see the running positions of the top three in the point standing. Scott. And we'll be going an extra lap, by the way, before green. So Scott will try to talk with Scott Sharp, who's running fourth. Hey, Scott Sharp, Scott Goodyear in the booth. How's the track starting to work out there? Multiple grooves, and how's your car handling? Yeah, the grooves are great, Scott. You know, you've been at least three abreast. Uh, this is just a great place for the Iowa cars to run at. Delphi Team's going to be a great car. You named it, we changed it last night. And uh, really, the car's good. Uh, we're pretty pleased to just run it along. As I talked to you last time, trying to get to the end. Well, we're just past halfway, so good luck. And down to Vince Welch. Jeff Ward is out. Jeff, you started uh, back toward the back, 22nd position. We knew it was going to be a tough day. Uh, what happened in the incident? Um, yeah, I just, you know, we were trying to make up some time, and we just weren't pulling the gear very well out there and kind of dropping back. And uh, just came out of the pits, tried to make up as much time as possible, and just was going flat out the first lap. And it seemed like it just bottomed up out in the high line. I was running up there all day, and it just took off. And, uh, Target Chip Ganassi guys done a great job. It's unfortunate we've uh, had some bad luck these last few weeks. Bob Jenkins. All right. Well, we noticed that the only Red Bull car out of the top 10 was the boss, Cheever. But, Jack, is there strategy involved there? Well, we think there is. We asked Dick Kerr, and he says it's just because we're slow that we've gotten seven more laps. But then they radioed to Eddie Cheever, and Cheever said, hey, do you think I can still pull this off with what we're planning? And they radioed back, Paul. Yeah, we do. So I think they're lying to us a little bit about his slowness. Ah, oh, Jack, how can you say that? Get ready to go green. It'll be Schechter, Giafoni, Rice, the top three as they come back to the green flag. That's Scott Sharp sitting back there and forth. Jill DeFerrin did stop under this yellow. And then Tony Rennett. Green flag's out. They're back racing again at Michigan. Got a car in back. And here comes Buddy Rice. Giafone again, but he's trying to work that low line. It may be more of his road racing coming up. Very possibly, Paul. Not a whole lot of oval experience. Don't forget that Buddy Rice is the 2000 former Atlantic champion. So this is something that's very foreign to him, something that's new as were pit stops before he started doing that first thing today. There's Jill DeFerrin currently fifth after having stopped and moves to fourth place with that move. And now going to try for outside, another shot. Outside, 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 clear. Jeff Ward, by the way. The concern, obviously, every time you come out of the pits on fresh tires, you're not careful, it'll we'll get you. You'll notice, too, that the noses on these cars all look very high. They are jacked up in the air. Absolutely they are, Paul, because what all these teams try to do is to raise the front of the car to help the rear wing get itself out of the airstream. The big rear wing on these cars is drag, and drag slows the cars down. So certainly what ends up happening is that if you get the front of the nose car up, 
and you can really put the car, as you can see right here with Gilles de Ferrin, right here, the front area is really high off the ground, almost double than what it is in the rear. It really helps the car get through the air. Buddy Rice and Joe de Ferrin side by side for third. You know, Buddy can make that low line work pretty well. Well, he's not only doing that, but... Just let him go to try to catch him. When he, got, when he got past last time and he ended up having to run high, I think he came off turn two a little quicker than he's done before. So maybe if he gets forced up there again, he might realize that that's maybe not a bad place to be. Check here with Giafoni working him. Right. Paul, your leader is not concerned about Giafoni as much as he is about the fourth place man. Gilles de Ferrin, they've been huddled. They realize that he's been a little bit out of sequence and showing a lot of speed. They're more concerned about the red and white Marlboro car. And yeah, that's probably well placed, but here comes a Panther. Cornish taking a move on Sharp, goes on the high side. You're clear behind now. That's clear really behind. the curb car, but he's a lap down. He gives way to Hornet. Some great three abreast racing for that D-shaped trial. Scott Sharp with his teammate Rana plastered to the back end as Sharp takes them both through traffic. And then pass for Nevis. At the front, Giafoni says it's time to try it. Still there. Still there. Got a car in back. You heard the word, he got a car in back. Run on his right back. With those guys running side by side, Paul, what happens is he punches a big hole in the air. And the guy to take advantage of that is DeFerrin. Yeah, DeFerrin just nicely tucked back in there. Taking advantage of both of them. And it does give Schechter a bit of a chance to pull away, though it does put Wright back into second. Don't forget to log on to ESPN.com, keyword ABC IRL, to check out our news have real-time race results and the IRL Challenge Fantasy Game. Long look down the back stretch. They turn into three and four. Scott Goodyear won your first race here. Twice you've won here. The pony goes to worry on Rice a little bit. What do you think about Cheever sitting back there, ostensibly Stephen Jewell? Is that a game? Well, he brought himself up from being a lap down, so right now he finds himself in 11th spot. And maybe he actually is playing this correctly, but I'm not sure that he has the speed because he certainly fell back at the beginning of the race. So maybe he's actually playing the right strategy here. Run a little bit slower, use a high gear, use less fuel, and maybe he will time it right at the very end of the race. Apparently just loping along in 11th. Worth doing that, he'd be saving the fuel. And we have talked from time to time about the draft and its effect here. Well, who better to ask than the people that have to drive these cars? Drafting is going to play a huge role here. Um, you know, you're going to have to draft in order to make passes. You're going to have to draft to stay in the lead pack. You're going to have to draft to win. You don't really work together with somebody here. I mean, you use his draft to get by him, and then you try and pick up the draft of the guy in front of him. I think that's all it's going to be. It's just going to be one big draft. If somebody gaps you like the lead pack, you're going to be in trouble. You can't make that up. Track position is not going to be as important you know, on a start, on a restart. It's going to be all about how well we draft, how well drivers are willing to work with each other, not let the cars that are out front you know, get away. I think in a lot of respects, you, you might be better off to be the guy drafting than the guy leading because you're going to get better mileage. It's easier on the equipment. Sometimes you don't have the fastest car, but if your car handles very well behind those cars, he might be the winner. Hector is still the leader. He's led 86 laps today, 407 for the season. Man with something to prove. We're going to go back in the field, actually back sixth place. You're on board Renna. Behind him is Catherine Evis. In front of him is his teammate Sharp. Sharp is currently sixth. Inside. 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 And Renna goes around his 
teammate Scott Sharp. Indy Racing League, Michigan Indy 400. It has been an incredibly fast race. Many of the laps above 219, some above 220 miles an hour in the race. Paul Page with Scott Goodyear, Bob Jenkins up top. Down below, Jack Aroot, Gary Gerald, Vince Well. This is not only the battle for the race, it's a battle for bragging rights for Thomas Schechter. He, he needs a good comeback. He had a bad week last week, got his boss Eddie Cheever mad at him. Now he's out in front where he's been most of the day at the same time. The Penske cars, Castro Nevis and DeFerrin are battling with Sam Hornis Jr. for the championship. Any one of those could come away this day with the lead in the championship fight. Paul, you go back to the situation between Ed Cheever and Thomas Schechter. The headlines in the paper this morning talked about Thomas Schechter. Although he's on pole, does he have support of his boss? Earlier on, we talked about it. We'll just say again, if he wins this event today, then Eddie Cheever has a tough decision about what he's going to do for not only the remainder of the year, but also for next year. Well, Jack Arun, you'd really like Thomas Schechter to do well. You'd like his boss to like him because he's a good kid. And not only that, you'd really like to see Greg Beck and this crew that has been called into service. They have never won an IRL race, although, as we said, they helped Billy Boat go to a fourth place points finish last year. But how quick was this put into motion? Quick enough that they couldn't get enough hotel rooms for the crew to service Thomas Schechter. Two of the crew members, according to Thomas, had to pitch a tent in the infield. Hey, nothing wrong with infield camping. That's a good thing. Got a little wet last night, though. Big storm through the area. Let's go back to Eddie Cheever, currently 11. And he's been fighting with Hearn. Hearn just gets around him. Hearn's got 10th right now, but Cheever's going to come right back at him. This belies their strategy a little bit. Well, you know, if Eddie's really trying to save some fuel, he might tuck himself in behind Kern. But right now, maybe he's trying to make up a little time. Remember, there's still a long ways to go in this race. We're only up 117 right now. You saw that speed. That's, that's not a lot of speed for an Infinity, especially when the leaders are running at 219. Here comes Loren Radon. And he wants to work on Richie Hearn and gets him. So I'd say both Radon and Cheever are kind of taking it easy back there. Dare in the pits calling off. That was pretty sudden. So we'll find out what's wrong with Ayrton Dare. And we'll take it back to the front. Schechter, Rice, and now a bit of traffic. We talked about that telemetry issue with Sam Hornet Jr. Gary, have they got it working yet? Well, Paul was amazing on that last round of pit stops. And remember, both Penske cars, DeBaron, Castroneves, and Hornish, all came in. And now they're out of sequence with Schechter and Giafoni. But for Sam Hornish, they either stalled the car or purposely turned it off. But when they restarted it, they got their telemetry back. So life is a little bit easier right now for the Panther team as we watch Sam work there behind the wheel in number four. And currently runs fifth. Nothing changes up at the front. But they're all right there where they can attack. What's his story on Dari now? Well, there's a throttle linkage problem. And it is so serious that A.J. Foyt literally has climbed off the stand and is trying to help his crew figure out what's wrong. Foyt just came down and said, you've got to take the air box off. Hornish just turned the fastest lap of his race, 220.04. You're on board the Menards car, John Manville machine of Mark Dismore. I'm going to ride here for a moment. Well, this is not what you call a blistering pacemaker. Keep it low. And that's why. There's guys coming. Coming outside. Now Paul's, outside. You can see the throttle right there. Not much throttle. Obviously going to come into the pits. You don't get around turns very quickly. Lateral G's don't go up and the speed's down real low. He'll get down to 60 miles an hour to get into the pit lane here very shortly. But you heard him come off too. The engine did pit not lane. sound very healthy. I have to say he's coming in there to get some service work. Once again, the Firestone telemetry tells us it's a great wide deal. Open. Wide open. And in this case, it's bad news for Dismore. Schechter just turned a lap at 221 miles an hour. 
And while that was going on, here's A.J. Foyt giving a little help on Dare's machine. Yeah. And A.J. Foyt is not at all happy about the performance of his crew. The leader is on the pit road, but A.J. has decided just to park the cars. Thomas Schechter comes on the pit road for what will be his third pit stop. Classic now A.J. Going to, Foyt. Paul, what they're going to do is they're going to change the front wing. There's the change if you look to the right of your screen. The first handling issue that Thomas Schechter has had all day. Off and away, that was a long stop, though. Vince? The update on Mark Dismore, not a motor problem. They had the right front was going down, so they came in a little bit early to fuel and fix the tire and back out, but reporting no problems from the motor position. Yeah, this looks a little better, though. Dismore's race is uh, well behind the lead, several laps down, running in 21st. So Rice picks up the lead as Schechter pits. You would expect Rice in shortly. And look at this, the Farron and Hornish. This is third Trying place. Trying to come back. Trying to come back. You're clear. Got the 31 to get by. Second is Giafoni. But he'll probably stop about the same time Rice does, and that'll give these two guys the front of the race. Well, we started off the race today, Paul, at 72 degrees air temperature, 97 track. And you can see we're not far from that right now. But the wind itself, the guys are talking about having troubles going into turn three, which is right down here. And you can see the arrow with the wind, six, seven degrees, sometimes going up to 15. will change the handling of the car down turns three and four, different than turns one and two. Well, and the wind speed that we heard complaints about earlier, as the sun tries to peek back out again, has dropped considerably. Now let's think about this. Schechter is pitted. He's still got a long way to go. He needed to get up to about the 126 lap if he could then get one more stop in and make the race. He didn't get that far. And so as a result, he's got some maybe three stops yet. Now tomorrow night, Tiger Woods, Jack Nicholas, they team up on Sergio Garcia and Lee Trevino in a one-of-a-kind primetime event. The Lincoln Financial Group battle at Bighorn. Tomorrow night, live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Find out how Tiger matches up with Jack at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Hornish is third. That's Giafoni high up ahead. 21 is the next position. Red Bull Team Cheever is expecting Buddy Rice will come in in two laps. Watch the draft, Paul. Oh, but he tried for the high side instead of the low side. Got advantage of both the cars in front of him, the lap traffic. That's you seeing right in front of Giafoni and then Giafoni himself. The whole situation here is that he was getting a huge toe, and Hornish just couldn't take advantage of it. I'm also thinking that Cheever ought to be in any time now. Closing in now. you got to get up with the 21. Use him. Cheever's 41 laps out from his last stop. His new protege, Buddy Rice, is coming in this time around, we're told. And all of this is critical, because now you're figuring for the last stop of the race. Well, they're trying to go as long as possible in this segment right now. But don't forget, we talked about Buddy Rice. Pit stops are something that are new to him. He's coming off 218, 220 mile an hour laps, has to come down to the pit lane and get it slowed down to 60 miles an hour for the barrels. And then his pit spot box is actually very close to the very entrance of the pits. And Buddy Rice and this crew ran the fuel tank almost dry. 1.5 gallons of methanol left in the tank. They'll refill it. They make a wing adjustment, a half turn down. And as the fuel runs down, it takes longer on the pit stop. Rice has dropped back into gear. He probably lost two seconds of that 13.2nd pit stop. Had to be a scary moment for him. Drop the clutch and almost stall it. Well, certainly a sequence a driver wants to do when he comes in. The car is in neutral. Get it off of the jacks. Get some service work done. But you have to be in gear when the car is dropped and ready to go. There's the new leader, Felipe Giafoni. But Sam Hornish may have something to say about that. <laughs> Giafoni should be in just any time now. 
Sam Hornet Jr. can stay out maybe another seven, eight, or maybe even ten laps. All the strategy splitting now. What the teams try to do is back time from the finish. Try to figure out what's the early as possible and also last possible lap that you can stop and make it to the end. So some contact from the Hornish's team. They can see exactly what we're seeing right now. All the teams up and down pit lane have a television monitor in. And as we rode with Sam Hornish, he was actually getting off the throttle and then he switched down the gear because the car was going a little bit high. So they can see this. The team will then tell him what adjustments to make inside the cockpit to hopefully help him improve his position. So much for Eddie Cheever's fuel gambit. He has just run the tank dry. Eddie Cheever radioed in the crew. I am out of fuel. Scott Goodyear, this is the longest drive Cheever will make to pit road. Well, I'm sure what ended up happening, Jack, is maybe they miscalculated by a lap. And if they did, Eddie is on the front section right now. He should have been in that last time. Now, you know, Eddie's a wise guy sometimes, and he knows that these guys are listening to all the different radio channels. And his last lap going through was actually not all that bad, about 217 miles an hour. So if he feels he's running out of fuel, he may only feel it in the turn when he gets a little bit of slurge in the tank. Well, that's exactly where he radioed it in, Scott. And remember, he got a little racy during this fuel sequence. So the conservation mode went out for about seven, eight, nine laps. Well, this time he's going to bring it in, Jack. But he's gone an incredible distance, 47 laps since his last stop. Cheever on the pit road out of seven. Eddie Cheever Jr.'s gambit continues. It will take longer because the fuel load in the on, on the wind side is less. So the gravity doesn't work as much. They can go to the stop as Felipe Giafoni heads to pit road. And the leader, easy, nice and easy. Felipe Giafoni. Nice and easy, put it right on the mark. Right on the mark, slow it down, slow it down. That's the voice of Peter Parrott talking to his driver, Felipe Giafoni. Giafoni says very little on the radio during the course of the race. Tom Bassey changing the right front tire. No changes to the chassis, just fuel and fire stones. And another smooth stop, 12.6 for Giafoni. Hustle it out, where you go, come on, let's go. And as a nice stop. Coming around and around and around. Oh, that team can be proud of that one. And so Hornick is now the leader with Jill DeFerrin in second place. Here's that points battle we've been talking about. They're both 39 laps out, so they're probably within four or five of their stop. And DeFerrin picked the pace up. He's running 219. 219 and a half. 220 last time around for Hornick. Three laps. Well, Hornick, back in front, 137 laps complete at Michigan. Hannibal's dragging to fair enough with him. He's inside looking, but he's not inside yet. He is looking. Coming inside, coming inside. One more time by, Sam, one more time by. See the barrel run down on the bottom and then drift back out. So you might want to catch him coming off and pull away a little bit. You got plenty of room behind, clear behind. Well, Sam Hornish Jr. is the leader with Jill DeFerrin right behind him. They're the front of the field, and they're going to the pits any time now. Right now, Sam is going to try and put a lap down here on Thomas Schecker. He would like to be able to do that before he gets called into the pits, but it looks like now is going to be his time. As DeFerrin starts to swing around the outside. What happened? Coming from 218 miles an hour down to 60 for the pit lane, locking up the tires. Good job, buddy. Good job. Logically, DeFerrin should be in any time. Come on over. Don Barnes calmly bringing his man in. He had a problem. 
of them on the first stop today, but everything looking much more sweet now. Waiting for that fuel, it's complete. No, they stole it again! It's the third time, I believe, it's happened to Sam Warning. And this time it doesn't require quick. 19 seconds. The Farron coming on the next lap. And right there is where championships can be lost. Very costly. A mere four seconds, but it can mean a world of difference. The Farron is due in. Sharp will pick up the lead, but we assume that he is due in, especially since his teammate, Tony Renna, came in on the last lap. And Paul, as we watch the Farron now coming towards the pits, a lot of pressure on the drivers during the pit stop. They know hey, that nice the pits are the way can be one one and lost. Minus one half pound of pressure right in front, everything else the same. Good job, nice and smooth. Pits are clear, shallow entrance. Why are you talking about the pressure? Okay, let's go, in, in, in. The arm is also stopped. Oh. Out in the right front back in. We're going half out. Hold on, just hold, hold, hold. Half turn on the front wing for DeFerrin. Revs up, he's gone. Keep an eye on Sharp. Stop. Take a little longer head pressure. Gets a little lower. Here is Casper Nevis as he Reset locks him up one. trying to make the speed limit. Reset your fuel, LDL. Reset your fuel. This is us. All by ourselves. He was a leader for half a lap. Money, money. Here we are, here we are. Limit her off. Limit her off. Watch her in here. Watch her in here. Jim Simrick, they say so calm. They're so poised. The Pesky team is rolling. Nice stop, Castro Nevis. Elio Castroneves has now completed his stop, and that should complete all of the stops with the leaders, but we still have a split strategy. It's a little tighter on the split, but nevertheless, it's still there, and the lead goes back to Thomas Schechter. Jack Aroot. Well, we're seeing the strategy begin to develop for Thomas Schechter. He, try, he is going to try and make it on one more stop. So the magic number you want to see in the left-hand corner of your screen is 40 laps to go. The crew says if they can make it to lap 160 without having to take on more fuel, they can go the remainder of the race without stopping more than this final time. So Thomas Schechter back at the front and his teammates right behind him. We'll be back. of interference here now.
147 laps out of 200 completed at Michigan International Speedway. And we have another caution on the racetrack. This is because of debris out in turn number three. But again, it benefits some of those who are trying to stretch their fuel mileage. And there is Sarah Fisher, who is currently running in ninth place and having a very, very impressive performance here this afternoon. Her teammate, Robbie Buell, already dropped out of the race, but Vince Zara's doing fine. That's exactly right. Uh, the car is running very smoothly. They've had uh, very minor adjustments to the race car throughout the course of the day. You mentioned uh, Robbie Buell, her teammate, has had a motor problem, but no such uh, problems whatsoever, motor or chassis-wise, for Sarah Fisher today. Schechter is the leader of the race with Buddy Rice running in second spot, then Giafoni, DeFerrin, and Hornish. We'll be back after this and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Next time, minus one fuel, minus one. Uh, we need 44 laps, that's been Sam. Cars look good. The parents in front of you, the Tony in front of you, the Tony is third. We need minus one, Sam, minus one. to Thomas Schechter, the leader of the race. Immediately, his teammate, Buddy Rice, moved around intervening traffic and pulled into second place to line up behind him. And now this battle develops. Giafoni trying to hold off to Farron. Hornish is in there, too. Hornish came down the inside, went from fifth, and around both Giafoni and DeFerrin. So it's Schechter, Rice, Hornish, one, two, three. Right behind Hornish, Ari Leyendijk, still driving an air-conditioned car. They haven't replaced the calling on that. Winds have picked up a bit. They're back up in the 15 to 20 mile an hour range. And uh, drivers certainly will feel that call because they can look at the flags as they're going around the racetrack, especially on the yellows. Drivers will come along the front stretch, look over at the flags in the pit lane, and certainly notice that they're a lot windier now than when they started the race. so critical and the season's beginning to run out. We started with 25 cars. 23 are still in competition. We'll take a look at speeds. 
as they hit the line. Everybody's running clean because of the restart. Buddy Rice has been putting down some fast laps today. Remember, usually the guy in front does not set the fastest speed because he's the guy pushing the air. Buddy Rice taking a little advantage of Thomas Schecker. Sarah Fisher alongside of Scott Sharp, and Fisher takes six away from Sharp. Her race is going very well, Paul. She's been getting stronger as the day goes on. You recall, at the very beginning of the race, she went backwards quite quickly. Well, they've obviously changed the car during no pit stops. They made the no car there. much to her liking. No Fisher keeps it low. Lion Dyke right behind him. Here comes Sharp once again. Okay, you got two legs, two legs. Grab the draft off of Gia Foley. Lion Dyke is uh, actually three laps behind the race. So he's not a factor here. The leader is still Schechter, Jack. Well, during that caution period, a heated debate took place between Thomas Schechter and his interim pit crew. The pit crew reminded him that the magic number was lap 160, and left it back up to him if he wanted to pit during that caution. Schechter, with that crisp South African accent, said, it's time for you guys on pit road to do some work. Oh, oh man. There's a brave kid, too. On board of Hornish. He's still working on DeFerrin. Marvel Team Penske just ahead. And again, you're looking at a battle for the championship. Still fat. Hey, Sarah Fisher just turned a lap at 220.3 miles an hour. Got one looking inside, coming inside, inside. And look at that. You're Here clear. is Sarah coming up on this battle. She just got around the phony. Now she's going to work on Hornet. Look at the low line. The car's working for her. Those are eight corners. Impressive because the cars continue to carry speed on the turn. And that low line. Sarah's right in there battling with both Hornets. Trying to catch the fair and Giafoni's coming up high. Now what Sarah needs to do is actually start to slice right there. Still there. Right in behind Gilles Gaffer, but she's going to take over the top of the ball. All right, Wes, you got help. Good move, Hornet. Since the restart, Sarah's been the star. Clear high. And she's got the Farron now. That's what a driver's looking for for the car to get better. Grab whatever you can off an inside. Up in here, you got two legs. Remember, Jack Aroot told you that the 40 to go mark, that's critical. We're approaching it quickly. Seven laps for pit, but everybody will need to stop. Everybody will. Okay, you got four lanes. You're checking out. Keep running that same proof. Keep checking. Doing a one hell of a job. Some nice, strong running by her. Really smart, using her head. Obviously used patience to get to this point in the race. This is exactly where you want to be. One more fuel stop for everybody. She's taking advantage of that infinity power. Didn't get too anxious at the beginning of the race when her car obviously wasn't working. But, oh, and Sam just gets a little loose. With DeFerrin sitting there off his right there. That lifts up the back end a little bit. Sam had to fight it. They're saying Sarah Fisher would be in in five or six laps now. Now, Paul, think about what we just saw. 215, 220 miles an hour. Car starts to slide, and these drivers are actually catching it and driving it through the turn. The Indy Racing League has a great one going at Michigan, the Michigan Indy 400. Thomas Schechter, this year's rookie, who's been in a lot of trouble the past week, uh, got car up against the wall once again last week while running alongside of his team owner. Well, his team owner wasn't happy with that. He brought Buddy Rice in as a third car on the team, but Schechter took the pole and has been dominating the front of the field. Lap 160 is now complete, and that's been the critical moment for everybody here in regard to fuel. And Thomas what? Schechter's crew, Paul, has gone to work. They've got the tires up on the wall. They are ready, but they're going to try and move this pit window as far as they can to make it a time stop. It's been 38 laps since he last was on pit road. 
And Paul, what Jack's mentioning about a time stop, they probably don't need a full tank of fuel to get to the end of the race right now. So they'll do a time stop. They will calculate how many seconds of fuel need to flow into the tank so they don't have to fill it up and carry too much weight or spend too much time in pit lane. Watching now the Red Bull car, Benny Cheever with Richie Hearn just behind him. Cheever is now ninth. Richie Hearn drives Cheever. Back at the front, here's Schechter. He's due in now. Of course, as Scott said, will carry him to the finish. But under green, That'll lose a lot of position. What you have to hope for is that everybody else has to stop under the green. And that your crew does superlative work. Remember, this is kind of a thrown together crew. But they have gelled very nicely, Paul. Having a problem getting the hose in. The Buckeye is not connecting. Four seconds just rattled off before they could fill it with fuel. This is going to be a long stop for Thomas Schechter. Very calm in the car. The now he's they stole the car. It. They haven't gotten it started yet. Now it fires. Oh my, what else can go wrong for Thomas Schechter? The litany continues. So Schechter's teammate, Buddy Rice, picks up the lead. He should be in shortly as well. Sarah Fisher goes to second. She too is due for a stop. Well, if there's any stops coming up here shortly, and if there is a yellow call, Thomas Schechter will be out of luck. He certainly has the speed, it seems so far, to be able to get back up to the front, but a combination of a few things happened there. They didn't get the fuel Buckeye in, a driver knows that, so then he gets a little bit anxious, he gets a little bit upset, and then you know it's time to go, so then you put the car into gear too soon as we saw him do, and he stalled it. And then they have to get the starter out in the back of the car, restart it, and then not have stopped now, that's almost double the length that it should have been. And then once you do that, what are you thinking about yourself? Well, the biggest thing a driver has to do is you have to departmentize it. You have to put it behind you. Now you can only take care of what you have before to do that's in front of you. Drag your brake before you hit. Watch it. Speed coming down. Watch yellow speed coming down. comes out. No pressure, Caution guys. lights nice. come on. Yellow, yellow. As Price yellow. and Schechter both heading for the pits, and this may be a cheaper problem. Yes, indeed it is. Look at the right front there. There was a brush involved. Well, Let's it's a big break for those other guys, Paul, but I got to tell you, Thomas Schechter gets some bad luck by his own teammate again, his own team owner, Eddie Cheever, because if this yellow didn't come out, everybody else would not have the advantage of the yellow pit stops. What happened to Eddie Cheever? Uh, he's just high right out of the racing groove. Remember, there's two or three grooves here, a couple of cars underneath Eddie. It looks like he's just on the high side, probably got his wheels up into the gray, and then sure enough, that takes you all the way into the wall. Now as we go back and look at this in slow motion, watch where Eddie is. He's actually way over here on the left-hand side, as you saw him, and then he ends up clipping the wall. There's two or three cars underneath him, so he was just outside of the racing groove. Now let's think about the Red Bull Team Cheever team this year. <laughs> it's not been a pretty picture. Going to be a long talk in the trailer between Cheever and his new protege. We've got another yellow, Eddie Cheever. Second race of the season, second race that Cheever is involved with contact with the wall. Boy, that's heavy damage. That's going to be expensive. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! There goes Cheever's engine. That was what we're worried about. John Lazier who contact with Thomas Schechter. Yellow comes out. Your leader, and the Thomas leader Schechter. again. Thomas Schechter into the wall. Oh, Cornish in trouble, he got tapped. The right in front of Eddie Cheever's car, collecting Cornish's car. Oh, and this time it's Eddie Cheever. Cheever physically is okay, temperamentally I'm not sure where he's at. Oh, oh Schechter. So close to the win again. Oh man, Schechter again. 11 cars, 10 races for that team. And the problems continue today, and two problems for the Red Bull Schechter team here in just a matter of moments as Thomas Schechter was in and stalled during a pit stop, and then Eddie Cheever hit the wall in turn number two. And 
that has brought out our caution and really throws all the pit strategy and the fuel strategy out the window now because everybody's going to be able to come in for a stop because there are only 33 laps to go in this event. But Thomas Schechter, Bob, will not pit, and they have told him just stay bunched up, and we'll see how many cars you can cycle through with this series of pit stops. Pit road is going to become very, very busy. Sam Hornish leading this group of cars down. It also includes Sarah Fisher, who right was running in third right position, park. and also Felipe Giafoni. Here come the two Marlboro Team Pinsky cars. And now we watch the crews frantically go to work and try to get their driver out first because with Team uh, Pit and uh, it's so important. No stall this time. Looks like Hornish is going to be the first out, barely beating Scott Sharp to that line. But remember now, Schechter does not, did not, not make a pit stop during this caution period. And there goes Sarah Fisher rolling out onto the racetrack yeah, once again. She has had just an incredible afternoon, putting on one of her best performances in a long, long time. Now, Buddy Ross, the third member of the Red Bull Team Cheever effort, also did not pit that time around. We understand that he will be in this time. And that was a miscue, Bob. He was supposed to pit. Owen Snyder called him in, but Buddy Rice had already passed pit entrance. They are very, very hot. Another rookie mistake. This is Buddy Rice's first race in the Indy Racing League, called upon earlier this week to become a third member of this team. And now, as you can see, he is down off the 18 degrees of banking on to the flat part of the apron and on to pit road. They've told him to get in straight. He does so. They're trying to regain their composure. They tell him to put the car in neutral. They're going to relight the car because it's stalled. Problems continue with this Red Bull team. Fires. Just another problem for Eddie Cheever's operation. A little more than 21 second pit stop. Schechter has led 115 laps. Rice has led 15, but right now th things have turned sour for Red Bull Team Cheever. We'll be right back. Less than 30 laps to go here at Michigan International. Under caution, the leader of the race is Sam Hornish. 
the caution caused by an incident involving Eddie Cheever. Here's Vince Welch. Eddie, you had a fuel mapping problem earlier. Your teammates have had some troubles in the pits. Not a good day. What happened in your incident uh, with the wall contact? I had a, a rough time in the beginning to get the car going. In the end, I was just running too high. It's 100% my fault. I got caught up in some dirty air behind Hearn. We were trying to leapfrog each other. I went up too high, got in the marbles, and that was that. Not a very good example, but definitely my mistake. You mentioned the comment earlier to me today. You said, not going to tolerate any mistakes. Absolutely, and that was a big one. Where will you watch the final stages of the race from? From Thomas's? Whichever one's in the front. He won't have far to go. Schechter and uh, Buddy Rice uh, pitted right next to one another. Jack Aroot. Vince, let me see if we can reconstruct what happened to uh, Buddy Rice and why he missed the call on the pit road. So many big changes have been made with these pit crews. But according to Owen Snyder, the guy that normally listens to know if the pits are open was a new man. And he signaled to Owen too late for him to call Buddy Rice in during that pit stop. I talked to, I talked to uh, Owen Snyder about it. He is very, very upset. This team is coming apart, fellas. They are yelling and screaming at each other. And Gary, it just shows the stress of so many problems for this Red Bull team since the start of the season. Hey Jack, at the other end of the pits, here's a championship team trying to defend a championship. John Barnes and the Panther team for Sam Hornish. How do you play this final series of laps now that everybody's good to go the distance? Oh, I think it's obvious. You just gas it. <laughs> if you you got to bring your A game now. There's been a couple of times this year when you've had trouble on restarts. Are you doing taking any special precautions now as you get ready for green? We just told him that his last restart was really good, and uh, just told him to do the same thing. Okay, thank you, John. Bob? Hornish will be at the front of the field when we go back to green. Scott Sharp will be in second position, followed by DeFerrin. Now, look at this. Schechter was the leader before the caution has lost all the positions down to 12th. However, he was able to get the wave around and is still on the lead lap. However, he is the last car on the lead lap in 12th. Buddy Rice lost eight positions. Fisher lost five. Hornish, however, gained three. And Jill DeFerrin gained two. Tomorrow night, Tiger Woods and Jack Nicklaus team up to take on Sergio Garcia and Lee Trevino in a one-of-a-kind primetime event. Lincoln Financial Group Battle at the Bighorn can be seen tomorrow night live at 8 o'clock Eastern, that's 5 Pacific, here on ABC Sports Championship Television. 172 laps have been completed. Just 28 more circuits of this two-mile track to go to decide who wins this thing. Here's the fastest laps of the day, and Clearly, Schechter and the Infinity engines have been very strong, with Schechter the first and the fifth fastest. His teammate Buddy Rice, second, third, and fourth on that list. And an impressive again run by Sarah Fisher, who, as you know, runs the Infinity engine. She has the sixth fastest speed of the day, and she will restart here in the eighth spot. We're on board the Chevrolet Corvette pace car. It is down on the banking, so in less than a lap now, we'll go back to competition, Paul. And least we forget, we need to give a mention to Richie Hearn, who is currently sixth and has managed to stay at the front of the fight all day, but it's going to be Hornish Sharp, DeFerrin, Giafoni. Those are the top four as they come back. Castro Nevis is just behind. There's the restart order, and then Richie Hearn. So top six all right together. Chevrolet Corvette pace car has already pulled off. Firestones are scrubbed in. Speed's ready to come up. Hornish is going to control the restart. Launch now. Launch now. Green, green, green. Maybe a little bit of a miscue by the Panther team, Paul. Certainly a slower restart than we usually see on Sam Hornish. Obviously a lot of laps to make it back right now, but slow restarts have almost been the norm with these guys for the past two races. And guys, just before you heard Pancho Carter say launch now, they said, let him come to you, let him come to you. So that seemed to be part of the plan. Well, that wasn't a very good plan. There goes Sharp. There goes Castro Nevis. There's go Giafoni. What's going on with Hornet? Down on the inside, it's Fisher coming around Hornet. Got one coming both sides. Got some coming both sides. Just keep in there. Now 
what happens after a restart sometimes, especially after a pit stop, you get a set of tires on, maybe the pressure's not up to where he likes it, the car might not be working the way he slow wants. Slow car on the bottom, slow car on the bottom. But you have to Clear have the patience. Clear Look at this, Jill DeFerrin has led 509 of the 2275 this season. Gary Gerald, what's going on with Hornets? We are told by the team that the car has been popping out of gear. I don't know if it's happened more than once, but clearly he's got some serious problems as well, we ride with him. Well, let's watch from the onboard for a second. That's sharp just ahead. We'll keep an eye on that, see if we have visible evidence of it popping out of gear. In gear now, and he's back rolling. Clear. Gets around Fisher, around Sharp. Run is down low on that three wide. Marlboro Team Penske's at the front. DeFerrin, Catherine Evans, Giampone still there in third. All the drivers no call that they have to stay up in the draft. Especially after this restart, because there might not be another restart, and if you lose the toe right now and you fall further back, you might not be in the lead group when it comes down to these last few laps. Sarah Fisher works on Scott Sharp. Use Hornish, use Hornish. There's a good piece of advice. Use the draft off of Hornish to close up. Still there. Now all this still is there. working. And still Thomas Schechter is all the way. Still there. Still benefit because all these guys are running side by side, not running single file and getting a good lead going out the front. Here goes Giafoni for the lead. Giafoni forges out in front of Marlboro Team Penske, picks up the lead. Schechter, by the way, nice is job. now in 10th. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth, nice job. Look at this, Paul. Three abreast and everybody's fanned out. Almost touching wheels going into one. Yeah, but looking at the speed, look at Schechter down there. Fastest lap at 220.4. Come forward two positions since the restart. There's, There's probably, still time left. Absolutely, probably red mist in his eyes and a fire in his belly right now because he knows he has the car capable and he is capable of winning this race today. Since the restart, we mentioned Richie Hearn been staying right there on the restart. He's gotten up in this fight. And Paul, he's done a nice job on the high line. It's really working for him outside today, and he's used that draft to pick up some spots and give a shout out to his crew as well, which picked him up two spots on that last pit stop. Oh, yeah, but look at Sarah now in second place behind Giafoni. Hornish drives the Farron for third. That low line, Paul, we talked about, her car works so well there. It seems to be so fast right in the middle of the turn. She carries so much speed going through the middle of the turn and off the turn. Well, in theory, she would have more power than Giafoni. What she really ought to do is just stay with him for a little while. Well, her car is working. She's okay, able to slice right. back and forth. Lane, she lane. needs to get, get some so timing down. Off. She lost some momentum there. She might pay for so it right up, now so with up, Hornish. The Hornish. Oh, here lane. comes Hornish. In the draft. Inside, 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 clear. Hornish, you're going to have to burn. Okay, grab up the Giafoni and grab on up. Three lanes, three lanes. You've got to get a run up here in one, two. And look down low there. Oh, yeah, Schechter. Now up to seven. Scott Harrington with the car off the pace down low. Slowed down as the field came by. No factor to the battle for the lead. Schechter now seven. Still plenty of time left. 18 to go. Now 17. Fisher is going to look outside of the leader, Giafoni. But Sarah's mom keeping an eye on it. Oh, yeah, she's doing just fine. Hornet tucks up tight to Captain Nevis. All three cars in the battle for the championship are right together on the race course. Captain Nevis, Hornet, to Farron. And Paul, as we're watching this action on the track, outside the window of our booth right now, there is not a person sitting down in the stands. Still there. Still there. Sarah Fisher. Still there. 
trying still to there. get the lead from Gio Fermi. Down the back stretch, side there. by side. Use it up. Still She's there. holding on. Still there. Half. Quarter. Just quarter. And Clear Sarah high. Fisher comes to the front. Okay, good girl. Okay. This is Runger Group coming outside. We got help. Still half. Still there half. Lap 185. 185. Nice and smooth. Still good. Still outside. Still well, outside. if I didn't know better, I'd say those still two there. touched. Still there. Well, you can't She's say they're not trying. No. Oh. Still there. She's drifting okay, a little nice. bit still high, still a little there. bit of push in the car. Oh, Giafoni's playing a low line still there. And the guy taking advantage right now is going to be Hornish. Three wide. Three wide bottom. Still there. Three wide. Still there. The still there. Still there, Sarah corner. got still laid down wide. on the line wide. last time still through quarter. here, no, but still clear, maintains clear, clear. the lead. Giafoni, I think, quite wisely yeah, drops timing. in behind her. She doesn't need a Hornish to get up there in that fight. Penske cars go side by side. And Paul, all day we've been talking about horsepower, the infinity power. Nice job. But I can tell you right now that Empower is going to play one issue, but if your car is not working all the way through the turn, you're not going to be able to carry the speed. And with this draft going on, all the cars bunched together right now, horsepower is not as a big advantage as it used to be. Alongside sixth place Renna now is Schechter. And they're all right together. The interval is less than a second. So Schechter, even though he's sitting back in fifth, he's only eight tenths behind the leader, Fisher. And all these drivers right now, Paul, are trying to figure out with maybe five laps left to go, where do I want to sit? Where do I want to be? We see at the front, maybe that's not the place you want to be at. They can't really get a run on the top side in here. Make them use the outside, right with. Inside, inside. Inside, 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 you're up there behind if you need. Inside, sit, sit just fight him outside. Still there. Terry had a little Still help there. from Hornage, but now he's elected to come into down the with the opponent. Still there. Still there. Still there. Still there. Now, Paul, as we're watching this great race, and think about these guys have been in the car for almost three hours. Their heart rate's probably about 180 beats a minute right now. But look down on the inside. Schechter has just joined this fight as he goes for third. Giafoni back to the front. Schechter charging Fisher on the inside. Pendigo the line. Pendigo the line. Nice job. Keep pushing. It's going to be the and longest, fastest pit lap in a long time. We talked earlier in the show about the lower line. People want to be protective of it. I bet you right now you watch everybody be hugging that white line all the way along here when it comes down to about five laps left to go. Stay low with the pitch. Three wide, three wide. Okay, clear outside, outside, outside. Got him looking outside, outside. Outside, just suck up on this guy, suck up on this guy. With car. Sam getting back out of it, that's put him in the clutches of everybody behind him. Look at the swing that DeFerrin took that Going time. Back. A little bit of traffic just up in front. Maybe possibly Billy Boat, yep. the only other driver, team owner of the series beside Eddie Cheever. Who now Paul's probably standing yeah, up in the pit lane. Over here in front. Let's get around him. Eight to go the line, eight to go the line. Pick your spot here. Show me who's sitting down. Schechter decides to go. Nice Third fast still. But Giovanni continues to hold on to the lead. DeFerrin still running that middle line. Renna goes side by side with Fisher. Oh, do you believe this? This is terrific. Fisher comes back and runs. there. Did you these guys ahead? Still there, quarter, quarter, clear, clear. Stick with these guys. Don't lose that draft. Use the draft as best you can. Oh, Too yeah. late. Too late. They know they're watching a finish. Seven to go. Schechter drives for the lead. Outside. Still there. Still there. Still there. Still there. Got a pinch.
What usually happens in those situations, Paul, if DeFerrin gets a little bit closer. Nice job. Stay with him. Stay with him. He'll make the difference on whoever he tags Best behind. Going outside. Outside. Eddie Cheever still watching outside. from the pitch. Look at that smile. Outside. This that's going on right now, Paul. Schechter's looking in his mirror saying, guys, go side by side, slow each other up for me. Now Buddy Wright's on the move. You saw him come down the inside. But Eddie Cheever may have scared Schechter into a win. Rode him hard this week. Schechter pulling inside, away. Looking inside, looking Giafone, inside. then to Farron. Right inside. Here comes Rice. Inside. Five to go, five laps to go. Lead stretches. Schechter just working. screamed into the radio. How many laps to go? How many laps to go? Right, buddy. Let's go. Look at him stretch out now. Plenty of fuel. It's not a factor. Rice is going to battle with the Ferran. That's a fight for third. Good job, four to go. Now that group of four, Paul's doing the right thing, led by Giafoni, staying in line. If they have any chance of catching up to Schechter, they need to get one, two, three, four, follow in line, draft off of each other. Schechter's pulling out a bit of a lead. And we're enjoying Schechter as he overhauled George Mack. But you gotta give a lot of credit to Buddy Rice right there worrying to Farron in his first IRL race. Not only that, the longest race of his career, Paul, and he went through so many new things today. Pit stops, traffic, high speed, 220 miles an hour, a high banked oval. That might not be the best idea. Yep, DeFerrin's gonna work on Giafoni now. Three to go. They cross the line, now two to go. Right tried to muscle his way in. Picks up Giafoni. That's going to work. But Renna's going to get in. We talk about rookies. Don't forget Renna. This is only his second race. So Thomas Schechter, as he comes around, is going to be looking at a white flag. Then he'll know how many laps to go. Thomas Schechter leads pretty solid. Second is anybody's choice. Sarah down underneath Hornet. Now attacks the Penske car. Hornet's come back at Sarah. Look at the lead. Schechter fell all the way to 12. Came back. Here comes Buddy Rice inside Giafoni for second. Oh, he muscled his way past there. Got down on the white line and moved them up before they got to the banking. And here comes. Eddie Cheever, you may have just scared Thomas Schechter into his first victory. Congratulations. All Thomas needed was a little teeny bit of a change. And unfortunately, it had to be done through anger, but that was a fantastic drive that he drove. I was the one that did the bonehead move, and I probably should be the one that be set down on, uh, on Monday. Both of them drove impeccably. I'm so glad that we finally have this money. So is it three back. cars in Kentucky or two? Well, right now, you'd say there's two, and it should be those two guys, wouldn't you? <laughs> All right, Eddie, go to victory lane. Schechter and Rice, the teammates that started on the front row, finished 1-2.